good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have some great news, even better than the great news we had yesterday, guys. This thing is barely even holding on. I don't even see how it's still a tropical storm by the time it reaches Tampa. I think it's going to be a tropical depression. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day. I am all year round. Just Friday from sundown to Saturday from sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. But make sure you hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss this season. This thing has really gone down, guys. You don't even have tropical storm warnings or watches. The only watch you have is for the Florida Keys. You have a tropical storm watch all the way to 8.30 this morning. And that is about it. Uh, you have a little bit of flood warning uh, south of Tampa until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. And right below Jacksonville, northern Florida, you have uh, flash flooding all the way to 8 o'clock tonight. You have an upper level low. Has a little bit of rotation, not much, but it's going to be bringing a lot of thunderstorms and a lot of rain to southern Louisiana, Florida, right along the southern coast of the Gulf of Mexico. And it will be traveling over into the Atlantic, and that's why you got a little flood warning. You will be seeing some storms. But let's get to what I have for you guys. I hope you have a very great and blessed July 4th. Be very careful out there today. God bless every single one of you. Now, the 6Z is out for the intensity guidance, and this thing has gotten even weaker. Uh, most of the guidance shows that it's immediately going to drop down within the next 24 to 36 hours to its lowest point, where it's 45 knot winds is what it's saying it has. Most of it is over the Gulf of Mexico. The most I could find for you guys is maybe 30 miles per hour wind gust. <laughs> That's about it. But as of 5 a.m. this morning from NOAA, it is... Max sustained winds of 65 miles per hour, 1,006 millibar pressure, and is moving west northwest at 14 miles an hour. So it has slowed down greatly. This thing has come down altogether greatly. And here's your tropical storm force winds. Who can be in the impact for this storm? And you can see how it is. Pretty much uh, all of Florida is anywhere from a 10 to a maybe 30% chance of tropical storm force winds. Right on the edge of Cape Coral and Tampa along the western coast of florida you could get up to a 30 percent chance for tropical storm force winds and here's your three-day forecast according to noaa and all the yellow is tropical storm watches they're not warnings they're watches <laughs> so you just gotta watch as this storm comes by because it's literally dying out as it comes by y'all be going by the florida Keys sometime around 2 a.m on tuesday and it'll be around tampa sometime around 2 a.m on wednesday and that 24-hour period right there is going to be the worst 24 hours for this storm. But they do have it predicted all the way to be a tropical storm all the way to it leaves out to northeast. I believe it's going to turn into a tropical depression, uh, maybe by Tampa, maybe a little bit sooner, all the way to South Carolina. It might pick up past South Carolina to maybe a low-end tropical storm as it leaves. I still don't see that happening. And the rainfall predicted by NOAA of what everybody can expect in that light green is one to two inches of rain and the dark green is two to four inches possibility from the storm most of it is over the gulf of mexico in the water and you have a little area on the west coast of florida that could see four to six inches and i know some of y'all are already having heavy rainfall already so the rainfall could be the worst problem of this storm for everybody it's about seven o'clock this morning that's pretty much how they do it the first one's all the way to 12 z you will see some rainfall through the northern half of Florida, and as the whole day of Sunday, it will pick up a little bit more maybe for the Panhandle and southern Alabama, but it's pretty much the same area. Now, as you go through Monday morning, this is where you most will be for the storm. This is where you're going to get your slight risk of rainfall in this yellow right here. And then by day three, as the storm passes by and goes by the southeast, and pretty much everybody in Florida is in a slight risk for getting some uh, flash flooding going on, okay, it will be one to two, maybe even three in certain spots of inches of rain coming down pretty quick. And normally you can handle about one inch per hour and then a half an inch an hour after that. So that's why you're probably going to be getting a little bit of, of flash flooding uh, warnings. As far as storm surge, the only peak storm surge that we're going to have is going to be around the Florida Keys. Florida Keys, you could get one to two feet of storm surge as this tropical depression, tropical storm passes by. And according to the 6Z, within 48 hours, it'll be somewhere to the west or right below the Florida Keys. And then in 72 hours, it'll be somewhere around Tampa. But this storm is literally scooting by. It's having shear. It can't get organized again. It's pretty much done. South Carolina, y'all should be somewhere around four days away. Now, as we look at this big discombobulated group of thunderstorms, you can see it coming over Cuba 
very weak. Not only do you have it getting a lot of shear and all the rain is east side loaded and getting sheared off the center of the storm, it cannot grab itself back together. It does try to get grouped back together again as it passes by Florida, but you can see how it just weakens down. All the thunderstorms is getting sheared off to the east side of this storm and none of it's around the center. It don't even get a good uh, closed low. And as it makes landfall and goes towards the southeast, it's pretty much a group of thunderstorms at that point. You look at the streamlined winds, you can see how it pushes it a little bit to the north as it goes through, and then it goes a little bit further north. But at this point, the streamlines do push north, but it does have some streamlines pushing from the west to the east. So at this point, it could go in, but there's still not a whole bunch to worry about as, as far as vorticity or major winds. This is going to be a rainfall event for this as it passes by. And then if it makes it a little bit further, it just disappears. There ain't much left to talk about. Let's talk about wind gusts because winds are way lower than the wind gusts. I really think this is going to turn into a tropical depression. Monday by 8 a.m., Miami should be feeling 20 miles per hour winds. It may get up to 30 as this storm passes by. It will cover the southern uh, Florida around 20, 30 miles per hour at its tops by 11 p.m. on Monday. Then as it goes by, you can see everybody is pretty much in maybe 30 miles per hour wind gust as this passes by Tuesday morning. Going by the west coast of Florida, Sarasota gets the highest, maybe with a little bit of 37 miles per hour wind gusts. I, was, I expect that to actually come down some. Well, that's Tuesday by 2 p.m. Then as it goes towards the panhandle and starts coming in, you can see it right here on the west side. Y'all stay around 30 miles per hour wind gusts the whole time. This is all the way to Wednesday by 5 a.m. As it gets on shore towards Gainesville and heads north, y'all getting about 30 miles per hour wind gusts. And the total rainfall from now all the way to Thursday, <laughs> July 8th, it'll be well past. So there might be a little extra rainfall involved in it when these storms does come after it. But still, giving it its best chance, this is your rainfall amounts. Cape Coral, 1.8 inches. Sarasota, a little over an inch. Tampa, a little over an inch. Uh, Gainesville and Tallahassee, y'all get almost 2 inches. Tallahassee, barely 2. Panama City, you're getting two inches because as this passes by, y'all do have this upper level low that does pass by and bring some storms to northern Florida. So you will be getting some rainfall from that, but this is very low amounts. Wednesday night and the Thursday morning as it passes by South Carolina and goes down the east coast, you can still see the wind gust is still in the high 20s as it passes by. This thing strengthens when it leaves. And y'all have a system coming through the, the Ohio Valley. That's where you're getting a lot of this rainfall. But you can see the track of rainfall coming all the way from Georgia to North Carolina. Maybe an inch, maybe a little above an inch for a couple of localized areas. But everybody else is going to be seeing light rainfall. Y'all going to see more rainfall from the storms you're going to have coming through before that. So here's your storm coming over Cuba, and you see that the mountains have just weakened it down greatly. The core was too small, and it couldn't keep a strong rotation going. It just got messed up pretty quick. It comes out at upper level low. It tries to strengthen back a little bit. It gets some rain, some thunderstorms, but it just can't make it. There's too much wind shear. And you can see that here. Here's your surface low pressure, your tropical storm, tropical depression. And right when it comes off of Cuba, it is getting hit big time with the wind shear. And as it comes up, wind shear will not let it do anything. It just gets choked out by wind shear all the way to landfall. Matter of fact, I'm showing y'all have worse things to worry about in this slight risk and this marginal risk uh, for today for severe thunderstorms. You need to worry about this storm passing. Your outlook for tomorrow, you even got the marginal for the Midwest. Nothing down here. And the outlook for the day after tomorrow is even better and then as your storm passes by right here by florida you can see that the high pressure comes back down like we normally have this time of year and it blocks anything from coming in the caribbean it brings up all this wind shear so anything coming into the system matter of fact will not make it at all now the surface low pressure you see here trying to wandle around actually show that there is one chance out of 31 <laughs> that this can come up into the gulf and be a problem i will show you that but you can see how long this wind shear will stick around. This, this is usually what we deal with with June and July. We don't normally get uh, these storms coming in this strong this early because we have this big, what they call a tut, stays down and it keeps the wind shear coming through the Caribbean and nothing normally can come in. And you look how long this wind shear is and how long it's going to stick around. Look at that. Nothing is coming through our Caribbean 
for quite some time. And we are already over to July 19th. And when I check to see what's going on in the MDR, the main development region, we do have a couple groups of thunderstorms that tries passing by, but they can't do anything. There's too much wind shear, and that wind shear is just killing anything that passes by. So you can see that we pretty much have a good break right now, guys. We don't have anything coming through. Any energy that's coming through is going southern through Central America, and it could be East Pack uh, storms. That's about it. Now, when we look for the chances for a tropical depression within the next 72 hours, the storm has a good chance, an 85 to 95 percent chance of being a tropical depression as it comes towards southern Florida, but it weakens down very greatly within the five days as it passes by. And the chances for it being a tropical storm within the next three days is very weak. Matter of fact, it's all the way down to 10 and 15 percent chance of maintaining tropical storm strength as it passes through the southeast. And we look through the ensemble members, you can see how we have nothing going on. We have that one low possibility that's coming on from that uh, surface low pressure that's passing through Central America. And there's a chance it can come up after all that wind shear and go towards uh, Texas a little bit. And that's all I got pretty much from the models is that one low storm. And guys, this is going maybe two weeks away <laughs> probably ain't gonna happen you look at the possible cyclone locations you can see how weak any possibility is for this storm as it comes over cuba there's nothing left to this storm it's going to get messed up here's a possibility of that surface low pressure becoming something and scooting away uh, from that all that wind shear i showed you and get into our golf once again this is so far away it's unbelievable but so far it's shown that there's a chance for it to turn and maybe go towards texas or louisiana Personally, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to come out by the East Pack. There's just too much shear. You still got tropical storm watches for uh, Florida Keys, and that's about it. That's until 8, 8.30 this morning that you need to worry about that. That's about it. They still have it as a tropical storm as it goes across to the southeast. I believe that this is going to turn down to a tropical depression, probably right before Tampa as it continues on that's about it and that is about it guys i'm going to go ahead and play this for you this nam 3k it shows the next 60 hours you will see the upper level low rotating around barely but it is bringing some thunderstorms to the edge of the gulf states and you'll see it come up through cuba you'll see some storms coming by uh, maybe miami a little bit by tampa as this comes by that's why y'all have the most uh warnings for rainfall because it does get a little close to y'all it does bring y'all the most rain before it tears up and weakens up to a group of thunderstorms <laughs> but god bless you all i hope you have a very blessed day today let's praise our father this morning like we should do every day amen thank you father for weakening this storm for none of us want to see any of this destruction amen all right i'm going to play this for you so you can see it's next 60 hours of nam 3k you will see the storms start to come up from cuba and you can see the storms that you're getting now that's kind of a little worse than what you're going to be getting from this tropical depression it's what i think it's going to be hope you have a very blessed day today happy july 4th to all of you god bless every single one of you psalm 85 lord thou has been favorable unto thy land thou has brought back the captivity of jacob thou has forgiven the iniquity of thy people thou has covered all their sin selah Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear... What, the, what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps.
Amen. Bless you all today. I don't see a lot to worry about this, guys, especially as far as winds. You do need to watch out for the rainfall, I'm sure. A lot of y'all are already saturated, but I don't see it's a very, very big deal. Just watch out for any trees that may have fallen from all this heavy rainfall. We all know how that can go. Have a great July 4th. Have a great day. Thank you again for visiting my channel. <laughs> all glory. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> Happy July 4th, everybody.